Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2 of the UDT Recreate tutorial series where I'm recreating the Ghost Recon Wildlands drone. In the previous episode we set up our basic flight mechanics and so now we can press 1 and fly left to right, up, down, and forward backwards. So in this episode we're going to now set up so that when we go right and left the camera will also tilt right and left so that it gives off a, a rolling effect. And then we'll set up our zoom in zoom out function and if we have time we'll also get the night vision done. So to start this off, we're going to come into our BP drone, and then we're going to make a event tick. Let me do it around here. And then from this event tick, we're going to get our. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to make another variable. We're going to call this right current. It's going to be a flow. We're going to drag this out, and we're going to. Get it. We're then going to drag out from there and go F inter 2. And then for our target, we're going to get our right target, connect that. Our delta time, we're going to go get well delta seconds. Now, inter speed, I'm going to set to 1.5, but again, I'd recommend messing around with it until you find one that you like. Uh, we're again, we're going to get our right current, we're going to set that. Connect that to our event tick and connect that to the output of F and Turb2. We're then going to get our player controller. So get player controller. We're going to drag out from there and go set control rotation. Now the reason we do it from get player controller is because you can only change the rotation doing it this way, otherwise you won't be able to access it, which is something that took me a while to figure out. It was a bit of a pain, but okay, so now get our right current. And then we need to times that by a float, and times that by 5, and we connect that to our X roll. We're going to go get control, rotation, and again going to split the string, or split the struct, sorry, and I'm just going to connect Y to Y and Z to Z. Now, the reason we do that is because the only thing we want to change is the roll so that we have that rolling effect like we were talking about. So now, when I come back in, we press play, we go into our drone when we roll it. This is just a nice little effect so that whenever we turn side to side, it gives off the uh, illusion of us turning. Now, if you want to increase that, you can come into here and you can up this to like 10. Now when we come into our drone and roll, it'll be a little bit bigger. I'm going to keep it as 5 for now. Also, if you want to change how quickly it uh, smooths in between it, you can change this number here. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to comment on this and call it roll to sides. We'll leave that one there. But now we're going to make sure that we have a zoom in zoom out function. So to do so, we're going to again need to make some more inputs. We're going to go project settings, input. These ones will be action mappings. We're going to call the first one zoom in. We'll bind that to our mouse wheel. Uh, where is it? Mouse wheel up. And then we'll make another one. We'll call this one zoom out. We'll bind this one to our mouse wheel down this time. And then we'll come back into our drone. We'll then get our mouse wheel. Up. And then from here, we're going to set a couple of things. So I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call this FOV. By default, your field of view will be set to 90. So I'm going to make that 90. If you're not sure if you've changed yours or not, you can come to your follow camera and just check your field of view here. By default, as you can see, it's set to 90. Now we're going to get our field of view here. We're going to set that and then connect it. I'm then going to drag out and we're going to get a clamp float. I'm going to make sure that the minimum of that is 20 and the maximum is 90. So the smallest my field of view will be able to get will be 20 and the largest you can get is 90. We're then going to get our field of view variable that we made earlier. And we're going to minus that by 10. I'm then going to plug that into value. Now we need to do the same, but for zooming out. Oops, I just realized that's not what we want. Zoom in. I must have just typed mouse wheel and he gave me that one instead. 
and then zoom out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to copy paste these two and then connect them. I'm then going to get my field of view again and this time we're going to make a plus float and again set that to 10 and then connect that to our value. And then I'm just going to line them up a little bit. I like my stuff to be neat. May as well drag that up, save a bit of space. We're going to call this our zoom in slash out. Now currently this won't work. Now how we've set it up is so that we need a function to actually make it go smoothly in between the two. So if we were to go ahead and play this right now and go into here, we can now zoom in, zoom out, and it won't do anything. And that's because we haven't actually set our field of view to be changed by that. This is just a little system that we have set up so that it changes our field of view number, which is what we're going to use now in our function that we're going to make. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this, uh, let's call it make zoom smooth. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have that open. Now, once we get in here, we're going to select our camera. In this case, it's follow camera. I'm going to drag out from that and we're going to drop that. I'm going to go set field of view. And then connect that, leaving us a bit of space to work with. We're then going to drag up from follow camera and we're going to type in field of view. Sorry, we're going to get the field of view. I'm then going to go interp2. I'm then going to get up from target, we're going to connect field of view. And then delta timing, I'm going to go get world delta seconds. Our interp speed, I'm going to make 2.5, and then we will connect that. So now, as you can see here, I'm setting my field of views, and then if I come back in now, we open up our drone, and then we now zoom in, zoom out. Oh, we haven't called upon it. I was like, why is it not working? <laughs> we have to make sure we call upon it. So now we're going to come into our drone again. We're going to find our event tick. Now, as you can see, I've already used it once. So I'm going to actually drag out, just double click here so it stays nice and neat. And then I'm going to connect a sequence to that. And then from the sequence, I'm going to get my make zoom smooth. I'm just going to call upon that function. And now when I come in here and open up my drone, you can see when I zoom in and zoom out, it zooms in just like we want and it's nice and smooth as well. Now if you don't like how slow that zooms in and you want to make it faster, you can increase the number we used in the function. So if you come on to make zoom smooth and increase this number to something like 20, it'll zoom in a lot quicker. Or if you want it to be slower, you can reduce that number again. And remember to zoom in slower, but I'm just going to leave it as 2.5. So now that we have all of that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and call this video here. So we've set up our zoom functionality, and in the next video, we'll now set up all of our night vision functions so that whenever we press N, it will change a post process that we'll set up later on on our drone, and it will set it so that it looks like it's in night vision mode. And then depending on the time, you might get something else done, but I'm pretty sure that'll take up the full episode. Anyway guys, if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to see me do any other tutorials similar to this where I recreate some kind of game mechanic, let me know down below in the comments and I'll be sure to get to you. But uh, that's all for this video, so see ya.